Okay, we made it. Time to survey the damage. Now, I did not... Uh, previous The previous video had me uh, with the full Malifaux bag in, uh, in my carry-on. Um, I elected not to bring the full bag. And that was more of a risk-reward uh, type of assessment that I did. Um, where I knew I would only be playing Malifaux one night. And my buddy, who I'm going to be playing with later this week... Uh, was cool enough to specify what crews he wanted to see. So, I did not bring the whole bag. Um, you know, because a lot of things can happen on the road. I could end up breaking or losing miniatures that I wasn't even going to use that day. Um, I could end up losing the bag. <laughs> that could be bad. Uh, so, I just kind of elected against that. So, I went with the, uh, the old standby. The little mini bag. And... In addition to um, the size requirements and everything else, I'm going to show you uh, why I went with this uh, particular bag. And the very unusual and, let's say, um, somewhat dangerous, conditionally dangerous way in which I pack these. That said, this bag, or at least the way, it's, the way I've packed it, is a little more stable against stuff like this. Or bouncing around inside of a plane or rolling around inside my bag. Um, pretty good for that. So uh, let's look at what's inside the bag and how I got that there. Okay, so I apologize for the poor lighting and the shaky camera. I'm trying to shoot this in a hotel room. So anyway, um, let's crack open this bag, survey the damage. So there is there are three crews in this bag. Um, two of them can be played about 30 plus soul stones, uh, some a little bit less. Now, um, I added this little modification to the bag just to help things, uh, uh, help some of the softer edges that are gonna hit the, the hard, the hard uh, card insert here. Um, well, let's start here. So, Got all the stat cards here. So those are ready to go. Uh, did some laminating on them. Uh, laminating does a couple of things. One, it just helps protect the cards. And two, I like that the laminating process will flatten them. Um, so looking at what's inside, uh, this is not entirely recommended as a practice. But uh, for the traveling miniature gamer this might be the way to go um, what it does require is that you protect and seal your miniatures um, because they are you are going to rely on the miniatures um, pressing up against the foam to provide the stability uh, so you can see here sorry for the really bad focus but this is Colette so you can take Colette out she made it okay. Uh, I can't really focus, but she didn't. She didn't suffer any damage. No dings. No, no busts. In fact, the way that she's packed in, with her head, sort of this way, into this uh, recessed foam here, um, it makes it so that when she's in the, when she's in the bag, she doesn't move. In fact, like I was throwing that bag around earlier. None of this stuff moves. It's all in there really tight. Um, the thing about foam bags, and, which is uh, great, is that you know you, they've got enough space. They generally, or you can you can p pick out enough space to fit your miniature. Um, but a lot of times uh, there's going to be gaps and and things where the miniature inside is going to be shaken around, um, and that's not so bad for a one piece uh, miniature like this. Um, who's pretty stable on the base? Probably not. Nothing really going to happen there. Uh, but it it could be bad for uh, miniatures that have pieces, um, really fragile pieces that might break. Um, so you don't want to do that. Now, Colette has a little guest with her, and that's uh, one of my wicked dolls. And you can see that the wicked doll is sitting inside the foam cell there. Uh, in an unusual way. Most of the time people will put 
And this is a square for a height one type model, like a um, like a wicked doll. Now, in my normal bag, the doll goes in that way, uh, and you know there's a little bit of shaking going around going on around there. But that's not really that big of a deal, again, uh, for local stuff, and it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't rub off the paint or anything on the miniatures. However, when I'm traveling, I need to optimize this space. So I've got two one-piece miniatures in here. And Colette just pops right in there. And nothing moves. They're, the models physically aren't touching each other. In fact, um, the way this is positioned, the Wicked Doll, actually, the, well, right now the Wicked Doll is touching Colette, but... Um, it's not, it's just really kind of just touching the base, so it's not a big deal. If you look here, this is a uh, performer and mannequin, um, and you can see that they're juxtaposed, they're, they're actually, um, one's uh, head is on this side, the other one's head is on this side, and down below, down in between, I've got a, uh, mechanical dove. So I take the small, thin miniatures on long cells and I'll stick them in like that so that they're in between this is a wow really not getting good focus here but uh, here's another mechanical dove in between a performer and mannequin and that's really kinda how you have to pack when you're trying to fit I don't know what is this 30 some miniatures in a tiny little bag like this some miniatures like the Shikome is a pain. Uh, what I had to do with the Shikome is she had to take up a two cell um, compartment, fit a little puppet underneath, and then I ran the wing through this foam cell just to keep her still. Um, because it's this foam cell is kind of pinching here in the middle part of the wing. It's not pinching this glue point here that, um, that could snap. You can see that the Seishin skinny enough to where they can slide into this one one cell um, compartment there and they're they're fine um, and then I've got Cassandra by herself now this is where things get a little different Cassandra is a type of miniature that you can't really pin uh, the arms holding the sword so I went ahead and put her in this way so that she wouldn't move at all and there would be absolutely no pressure where the glue is um, between her hands and her arms because that's where the the model is glued um, finally this cell with the extra little bit of padding has the Corfi duet in there so the duets doing in there they would be jiggling around if I didn't uh, pop the extra little padding in there um, the other thing to point out with the duet is they're magnetized so that their bases are underneath so I've got the, their bases with the magnets in them, the 50 mil bases. I've got counters and a couple of extra uh, templates in there. Um, and this method uh, takes a little bit of practice. It's kind of like playing uh, crazy Tetris or Tetris on crack with your hard painted, uh, hard hard earned miniatures. Um, again, you really do need to protect the miniatures themselves, so giving them a, a good uh, multiple coat sealer uh, will help when you're tra when you ha when you're forced to transport them this way. Uh, inspecting around here, I do have it looks like I did have one guy come off of his base, one little ma uh, marionette, but that's a very simple fix as opposed to somebody breaking a limb or something like that. If they break if they if they happen to pop off a base, it's not not the end of the world. Uh, you just get some glue. Uh, traveling might be a little tough. You might have to either ask the store for glue or you might have to uh, I might have to get my buddy to lend me uh, one little drop of glue so that I can fix that guy. But all things considered, and the miniatures that are in here, everything seems to be doing okay um, so that's why I preferred 
taking this over the Malifaux, the regular Malifaux bag, because with the re regular Malifaux bag, everything's got its own compartment, which is great, but now everything is bouncing within its own compartment. And I really just didn't want to risk taking every single miniature I own to play one game. If, however, I was running a demo, um, then I probably would take the entire set with me. Uh, so, that's it for this section of Traveling with Miniatures, and I'll see you next time.